I want to conclude, and I want to, I want to uh, go into part five of our Living Inside Out series. How many of you have got at least one thing out of the Living Inside Out series? Please tell me, amen, raise your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Uh, if, if you're not getting anything, you're not listening. You're not listening. You're not giving God your ear. So uh, that's my prayer today, that uh, God would just speak to you. God would just speak to you. I felt compelled. And I've got the urgency on my spirit this morning. I want to teach just for a moment before I minister and preach. But I've got the urgency on me that we as a church, we as a people, we as a congregation, we as a community, we need to start living an inside-out life. Inside-out life. And I've told you before, could you imagine, Jenna, can you imagine what this world would be like if they would see Christians living from the inside out? You know, we have allowed this world and problems and circumstances and sickness and doctor's reports to dictate what God is wanting to do in your life. And sometimes I think we believe doctors and we believe reports more than we do the Word of God. The Word of God will stand when everything else is done away with. The Word of God says when the grass withers and the leaves fade, the Bible says the Word of God will stand forevermore. You will be judged according to the Word of God. So today what I want to do, I want to take this time, take this opportunity. What does it mean to live inside out? Inside out life for Jesus Christ. That means this. Listen to me very carefully. That means when God takes what He has given us and puts it on the inside, He will also release it from the inside to manifest itself on the outside. So God says, what I have given you is not just for you. It is for the world. Go ye therefore into all the world, preaching and teaching and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God says, I'll never leave you or no, I'll ever forsake you. We got a God, when He placed His Spirit inside of me, inside of you, watch this, you ready? He'll never leave you. Y'all just missed the praise break right there. He'll never walk out on you. He'll never leave you. He'll never turn his back on you. He'll never walk away from you. He'll stand you up, prop you up. Hallelujah. That's my God. He's good. Amen. Let's go ahead and praise him again. We're going to do it before we get it right. We're going going to praise him until we get it right here today. He's worthy of all praise, all honor, and all glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Inside out. Inside out. So it means what God has put in you will come out of you. So let me give you some scripture. Because if if I don't give you scripture and give you a a, a platform, I'm giving you my words. But here's what the scripture says in 1 Samuel 16, 7. I love this. The Bible says, man looks at the outer appearance. Yeah, that's so true. Most people will judge you how your outside looks. Most people will look at you and look at your life. Look, watch how, they even watch, people will judge you even how you worship. You can be doing a good thing, and people will judge you on how you worship. The Bible says man looks at the outer appearance, I love this, but God, but the Lord looks at what? Come on, man looks at the outside, but God looks at what? Man looks at the outside, but God looks at what? Man looks at the outside, but God looks at... When God looks at you, He sees your heart. So it really doesn't matter what people say about you because God's looking at your heart right now. I love this Psalms chapter 139, verse 15. This verse really stood out to me this week also. It says, you know me inside and out. Notice He didn't say outside in. He said, I know you from the inside out. He said, what I put in you is my spirit. He said these words, you know every bone in my body I love that. God says, I know you inside out. I know in Matthew chapter 10, he said, I know the hairs that's on your head, and I've numbered them. I've numbered them. He knows everything in your life. He says, I even know how many bones is in your body. Man, that's some good stuff. He says, you know exactly how I was made. Listen to this. Bit by bit, piece by piece, God says, I know everything about you. How I was sculpted from nothing, watch this, from nothing into something. I love that. 
God says, I know the world looks at the church, and I know the world may look at you as nothing, as a nobody. But God says, I am a God that specializes in making a nobody a somebody. I am a God that will take uh, somebody born on the wrong side of the tracks, wrong pedigree. And he says, I love you so much, I'll put my DNA I'll put my fingerprints. I know the hairs that's on your head. I know every bone that's in your body. I love this. And that gets me excited because you know what? Nothing surprises Jesus Christ. Not even you being here. So I started thinking about what it truly looks like living an inside-out life for Jesus Christ. And so last week we took a Coke can and we shook it up because whatever's on the inside, when it gets shook up, eventually will come out on the outside. Y'all remember that? Hope you did. This week, when I, when I, what God gave me, the number one thing God told me about living an inside-out life, an inside-out life, number one, an inside-out life for Jesus looks like a glow stick. Looks like a glow stick. And I know you're sitting there going, Brian, a glow stick? I know that's how people are like, what is he doing with a prop in the church? Trying to preach. Isn't it sad you got to use props to get people's attention anymore? Yep, a glow stick. Christians should look like a glow stick. A glow stick. See, Christians have something on the inside of them that is really powerful. But what I'm getting ready to give you, listen, most churches, people don't like preaching like I'm getting ready to preach. But this is so true because everybody under my voice is either going through a season in their life when I'm getting ready to preach about, or you're getting ready to enter into a season. So listen to me. Christians should look like a glow stick. The Bible says that, listen to this, that, that Christians are the light. Everybody say the light. The light of the world. You are salt in a city. The Bible says, listen, what you got on the inside of you is powerful. But watch this. His Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 and 16. Let me read this to you, then we'll get to the prop. It says, you are a light of the world. Hallelujah. Well, I could just stop right there, but I got to go. A city that is set on a hillside cannot be hidden. Did y'all hear me? I do not believe in, in closet Christianity. I do not believe that if you've got the Holy Ghost in you, you'll be soft and silent and you'll use, I'm introverted. You can call yourself any kind of vert that you want, but I'm telling you in Jesus' name, if you are a glow stick... If you've got something in you, he says, you are a city. Somebody help me preach. You are a city that's on top of a hill that the whole town, the whole world should be able to see. You know the problem with Camelsville? They're not seeing Holy Ghost Spirit-filled Christians. That's right. We're going somewhere. He said these words, nor do they. He said, you don't light a lamp and put it under a basket, do you? You don't, you don't light a candle and put it under your bed, do you? If you do, you, everybody say, that bed's going to burn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, but you put it on a lampstand. Watch this. And it gives light, hallelujah, to all who are in the house. In other words, if you're a born-again Christian and the light of God is, is illuminating your life, you'll know it because you're in the house. You're in the house. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I want to show you something about this glow stick. <laughs> this glow stick. It's not going to glow or it's not going to light up or shine until it gets disturbed. It's not going to glow or it's not going to shine until two things happen. Y'all watch this now. Listen, if you're ever going to glow as a Christian, if you're ever going to be the light in a dark world, two things has got to happen. You've got to get bent. Y'all hear it? Boy... I'm not Ray Roberts, but boy, that sounded like my back right there just got in line. And you've got to get broken. You've got to be bent, and you've got to be broken. You've got you to bend it, and you've got to break it. And notice what happens. It don't come on all at one time. Little by little, little by little, you'll start lighting it up for Jesus Christ. The more you come to church, the more you read your Bible, the more you get on fire, little by little, inch by inch, you'll start lighting up for Jesus Christ. Y'all know what we need? We need some glow stick Christianity going back again. I know we don't like to hear sermons like this, but it's in the bending, well, watch, in the breaking. It's in the bending and it's in the breaking when you will illuminate and you will shine for Jesus the brightest. Thank God we don't always get our way. If you would, I'd be behind the boat on the inner tube all the time, sun shining at the ocean or somewhere or another like that, having a, having a B-Raph moment. 
It never rained, never snowed. I let it snow one day, then it it just disappeared. But thank God we don't get our ways. Lord, we would never, listen, we would never know how to praise God if we never had a breaking moment. If you've never been bent over in your life and broken before the throne room of God, you really don't know what a praise deep down inside of you really is. But I've learned over the years it's in the bending, hallelujah, and it's in the breaking where I find Jesus the best. Hallelujah. You know what, you know what makes the world stand back and scratch your head? Y'all boys say what? Be real. Yeah. Here's what makes the world stand back and scratch their head and sit there and go, I just don't understand. Christians who are going through something in their life that other people, they, they snap and they break and they have a snap, crackle, pop moment. It's, it's seasons in people's life where they may be facing a sickness or a painful moment or a hurtful moment or a discouraging moment or a bad doctor's report or even death. And the world is sitting back. I'm telling you all the truth. The world is sitting back waiting for the Christians to sit there and go, oh, man, they, they're just like the world. But what messes the world up is when they see a man or a woman of God who's had a breaking moment in their life and they stand there and they throw their shoulders back and they lift their head towards Zion and say, I'm not stepping down, I'm not backing off, I know the Lord, and as for me and my house, hallelujah, we'll serve the Lord. We gotta serve the Lord. So it's in the bending and it's in the breaking. I know we don't like this. I know we don't like this. But it's in the bending and in the breaking, where you'll shine for Jesus the most. Sometimes I think God may allow some bending and breaking in our life to see what we're really made of. You know, it's easy to be a Christian when you, when you come to church for free, when it don't cost you nothing. You know, it's easy to be a Christian when nobody's, nobody's got you on topics or Facebook. You know, it's easy to be a pastor when everything's just flowing good. But here's what I've learned. It costs me some hell in the hallway to get to the presence of God in this sanctuary. To have a good marriage. Guess what, guys? You're going to have to invest. And it's going to take some bending. And it's going to take some breaking. But I'm telling you, in the bending and the breaking, your marriages will light up for God. And people will look at you and say, man, I want what you got. I want what you got. Young people, listen to me. You can always compromise and do what the world does. I heard a pastor say it like this. He said, I I, I tell my congregation to to the girls and the boys, he said, remain a virgin. He said, you can always compromise and give your body away and do like the world. But hey, the world can't come back and be a virgin like that no more. We gotta set the standard in the bending and the breaking. Hallelujah. That's what messes people up. Now, I'm going to tell you all something. This right here is a process. The bending and breaking is a process. Here is the process of Jesus Christ. And if you're a note taker, you might as well take this down because this is the process you, everybody, everybody say everybody, everybody, everybody is going to go through. If you are a child of God, if you're born again, if you're saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, this is the process that you and I, we will go through. Number one, everybody say, he, he'll bend me. Yeah, he'll bend me. And number two, he'll break me. But number three, he'll mold me. See, listen to me. Some of you are going through some things in your life right now, and you think that you're, see, we got it backwards in Camelsville. We, we think if somebody's being bent and broken that they got sin in their life, that they've messed up and God's after them or something's wrong with them. Watch this. There is no truth to that at all. What do you do with Job in the Bible who was an upright man? Who was the man that was in, in, in us? He said, he, this man is upright. He's strong. He loves the Lord. Y'all remember Job? He lost all ten of his children. He lost his house. He lost his livestock. He lost everything that he had. But can I tell you, I feel the Holy Ghost on this one. When he got bent and he got broken, he got down on his knees. And all of a sudden he said, God, now that you have bent me and now that you have broke me, now you have me. Sports head, guys. We don't like preaching like this, but I'm telling you, I have felt God, I have been the closest to God in the bending and the breaking. God mowed me. You better be careful. Because everybody wants to be the potter. Nobody wants to be the clay. Everybody.
everybody wants to be the potter. But nobody wants to be the clay. And God says, when everything, when it looks good to everybody else, God says, if I see a lump in your life, if I see something in your life that i got to take you back off the potter's wheel and start putting my touch on you and put you back on the potter's wheel and mold you. Here's the deal. You ready? God is breaking you and God is bending you to make you become what he has designed for you. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, where everybody, the bending and the breaking and the molding is for God to make you who he designed you to be. If it had been left up to me, I'd have been a state trooper. You say, oh, Lord, well, probably not now because it's bad right now. But that's what I wanted to be in my life. I wanted to be a state trooper. I always liked the lights. I still do. Y'all know what I watch on television? Live PD. <laughs> I love that. I like it. How many of y'all know people cray-cray? Yeah, if you, don't, if you don't believe it, watch live PD. But if it had been left up to me, I had other plans in my life. I never thought I'd be the pastor of a vibrant church in South Central Kentucky. But I'm telling you in Jesus' name, God had to bend me. God had to break me so he could control me and mold me into the man of God that I am today. And I wouldn't take nothing for the molding and the breaking and the bending in my life. I'm telling you, I wouldn't do it. Listen to me. I'm telling you, the process, here it is. He's going to bend you. He's going to break you so he can mold you. Come on. That's what he's going to do. And I'm telling you, it's in the bending and the breaking. When the lights are off, you're still shining. When the world's walked away from you, you're still shining. When your family don't have nothing to do with you, you're still shining. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Give God one more praise in here. Amen. He's going to bend you. He's going to break you so he can mold you. That's what he's going to do. Listen, if you're not being bent or broken right now, I'm concerned about you. I'm concerned. Listen, we got Christians that run from the bending. They run from the breaking. They think, well, if I, I'm tired. Listen to me. I'm telling you, that's where you'll find Jesus the most. Number two, I'm excited about this. An inside-out life. For Jesus looks like a stick of dynamite. I, I, I tried to get a real stick of dynamite, and I found out that's illegal. And he said, what you going to do with it first? And I said, you don't want to know. So uh, a real Christian, listen to me, I'm telling you the truth. An inside-out life for Jesus. How many of y'all want to live an inside-out life? You might as well get ready to be shaken. You might as well get ready to be bent. You might as well get ready to be broken. You might as well get ready to get on the potter's wheel. He's going to mold you, and he don't like what he sees. He's going to take you off, touch you up a little bit, put you back on the wheel. Yeah, amen. And this last thing I want to tell you is the inside out life for Jesus looks like a stick of dynamite. A stick of dynamite. I thought about how Christians should look like, have the effects of dynamite. And how many of you know dynamite has power? And if this was real, which it's not. Y'all chill out. If this was real, I promise you, I promise you, you'd be sitting there going, what's B-Ref going to do? What's B-Ref going to do? See, dynamite has power. Dynamite, watch this, moves things that's in its way. Dynamite, hallelujah, will shake things up that is stationary. I'm just telling you, I'm trying to preach really good today. It'll move you. It'll shake you. Well, I'm set in my seat and I'm firm. You better watch out because a stick's coming at you today. Dynamite. Not JJ. At good times, all the 80s people said amen. Yeah, JJ. Y'all went, dynamite. Y'all remember that? <laughs> yeah. But let me give you the Greek word. The Greek word for power. Y'all ready? Everybody say power. Here's the Greek word for power. It's called dunamis. Dunamis. And listen, in the Bible, if I'm reading my Bible correctly, which I, I, I know I am, the Bible says that I have given you all power. All power. John said this, I come and baptize you with water, but the one that precedes me baptize you with fire. Y'all getting it? Power. Dunamis. And dunamis means dynamite. Dynamite. 
Everybody say dynamite. 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 So what if I told you, I know the Holy Spirit is in you, but what if I told you also you have dynamite in you? Hallelujah. See, this stick of dynamite doesn't scare you just looking at this, does it? Like I told you about that Coke can last week. It didn't scare y'all a bit until I started shaking it. And he was going. See, this don't scare you. But what if, if this was real, and I took my lighter, and I said, I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all, you got about 10 seconds. And I go like this, and I light it. You would not be sitting in your seats, I guarantee it. Only a cray-cray person goes out there and go, it ain't real, it ain't real, it ain't real. But if I were to take this lighter and do this right here and go like that, I guarantee you, Allison, you talk about a rapture. <laughs> yeah, even the frozen chosen will say, <laughs> I am not. Thank you. There you go, man. Thank you so much. Amen. I'm telling you, it's the truth. But what if I told you that's the same power, the same analogy that the Bible gives, you've got dynamite inside of you. And wherever you go, watch this, I'm a stick of dynamite. And if you start messing with me, I'll cast the devil out of you. I'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Come on, I'm just telling you in Jesus' name, y'all are a stick of dynamite. Y'all got some dynamite in this house of worship. You know the problem? And I started thinking about this. Here's, here's the problem. Everybody wants the dynamite, but they don't want to light the wick. I got dynamite. You ain't got no wick. <laughs> I'm sorry. But here's what I have. I'm shaking like a leaf. Whew, can't even get that back up in there. <laughs> got it. Here's what I've noticed, man. The only way you're going to get what's on the inside of this is if the fire comes. The only way, watch me, the only way you're going to be able to use what God has given you, you may have the dynamite, is it, but is it lit? Is it lit? How many of y'all know the 4th of July, I was an expert at this, I'd leave my fireworks out and like it'd get wet and rain, and all of a sudden I'd try to light my fireworks and it wouldn't light. Y'all know what that's called? Dud. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't be a dud. Come on, y'all. <laughs> y'all are fun today. Don't be a dud. Because you'll never know what's on the inside of this right here unless you keep it fresh. You keep it inside of you. You keep the fire lit up on it. And ever what's in you, Jen, I'm telling you, when the fire comes, it's going to explode. And I'm praying at South Central Kentucky. Come on, listen. Well, that's your job. No, that's our job. That is our job. To preach and to teach the gospel and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know what I hope happens at Campbellsville Independent Schools? I pray that dynamite comes in the Christian name. Amen? I do. I pray. Taylor County, dynamite! Let's have a JJ moment. Have a dynamite. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is this. Listen. Most people will never know what's inside of you until you get lit. You'll never know. Now, all you people who got bad minds, I just said lit. And you all know, sitting there going, oh, your mind's in the gutter. <laughs> but I'm telling you, listen to me. This time I'm going to ask you a question. Y'all realize y'all got dynamite in you, right? Dynamite. And you realize that God said these words, my Holy Spirit lives in you. This world is dying and going to hell. Every 60 seconds, three people die. Every 60 seconds, three people die. You know what this world needs to see? It don't see, need to see an angry people, an angry church. It needs to see a church that's been lit up by the Holy Spirit that is on fire and making a difference in South Central Kentucky. And my challenge to you today is that you will allow God to bend you and to break you and to mold you and to light you up and explode in South Central Kentucky. And any mountain that is in your way shall be gone in Jesus' name. Somebody give God praise in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. When the fire is applied, you'll find out really quick if you're a dud or you're a disciple. You'll find out really quick what you're made of. Here's what else I've noticed, too, about, about Christians. <laughs> you'll know really quick what they're made out of. You let, you let the fire of the world start coming in their life, 
And you'll find out really quick what's on the inside of them. You'll find out really quick what's on the inside of people who are going through the fire of the world. But you let the fire of the world touch a man or a woman of God who is in a healthy relationship with Jesus Christ. It will fuel the fire. And I'm telling you in Jesus' name, what this world needs is some dynamite. It's some dynamite. So I'm going to ask you guys a question. What does a Christian look like when he starts living inside out? What does a Christian, what does a church look like when they start living from the inside out? We pay more attention to what our neighbors say than we do what the Word of God tells us to do. So I'm telling you all in Jesus' name. Y'all ready? It's, this altar's dangerous. Praise team, you guys come. I know, here we go again. I'm trying to be a better preacher. I really am. People laugh at me all the time and say, how long y'all have church services? Sometimes one, sometimes two, sometimes it's 1136. Y'all get to be the first ones at lunch today. Aren't y'all happy? I tried to used to help y'all out. I said, I'll keep y'all at 1 o'clock and let all the religious people get out of the way so the church can come in. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. I want to ask y'all, y'all ready? Here it is. Praise the team. We don't like this. But I promise you it's in the bending and the breaking and the molding where you'll find out which, how strong you are in Jesus Christ. You let the fire of the world come and some Christians who's never been bent and broken and that's not moldable, I'm telling you, in Jesus' name, they're going to be angry. They're going to be angry. Christians will shoot the wounded. Christians will shoot the wounded. You know why? They're not moldable. They're not moldable. I, had a, I went to a revival one time, and this woman, so help me, goodness, she sat on the end of the, end of the pew, and this woman was in her 80s. I'm not lying to y'all. And I looked at that pew. She said, this is my seat. I bought this pew. And so have we got an 80-some-year-old woman took, I don't know what she took, and it, it put her initials in the back of the pew. And I just sat there for a minute. I said, that's how we live. It's how we live, guys. This is mine. I'm not moving. And God is wanting to bend you today. When was the last time you had been broken before God? Well, I'm a man. I don't care what you are. See, I got brought up in a generation that real men don't cry. If you cry, you're a sissy. You, you, you better not see a man cry. If you see a man cry, boy, something's wrong. That is a lie from the pits of hell. You know what we need back in the churches today? That daddies that will cry over their children. Daddies that will cry over lost people. Daddies that will stand up and say, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm the man of this house. And as for me and my house, we're going to serve God. And if I got to shed a tear, I'll shed a tear. We got to be broken. You got to be broken. And if you're unwilling to be bent and broken, you cannot be molded. But when God starts molding you, you'll start shining. You'll start shining for Jesus Christ. And people will look at your life and say, man, how did you get where you're at today? It's in the bending and the breaking that I found my Savior. And all of a sudden, it's like dynamite inside of you. Guys, my, I'm telling you, my whole life is changing. My whole life is changing. You got dynamite in you. The question is this. When's the last time you've been bent and broken? And when's the last time you've allowed God to light you? Well, Brian, that's for that younger generation. No, no, no. I've never read that in the Bible. I've never read in the Bible. It's for God didn't say in the last days, I'm just going to touch my young people. You know what we need? We need the mamas and the daddies and the grandpas and the grandmas standing back up and grabbing the post of the church and praying and defending this younger generation. It's not about a younger generation. It's about a God generation. It's going to rise up and light some dynamite and explode in this world. But you're going to be bent and you're going to be broken. Don't run. 
We run from problems, God runs to problems. If you're sick in this church today, guess where you need to be? You need to be bent and broken at this altar. Y'all remember Mary in the Bible? She had the alabaster oil. Y'all remember that? The box? The first thing that happened when Mary entered into the house, she bent down. Y'all remember? Y'all remember? The second thing that happened, she got broken. She broke the alabaster box. The third thing that happened, God started molding her. See, God will bend you to break you to mold you. And here's what happened fourthly, y'all ready? She worshiped. The best place to be, y'all ready? Is at the feet of Jesus, just like this. God, you're over me. God, I know you're bending me and I know you're breaking me. But God, I know there's some worship inside of me. So God, if you've got to bend me, if you've got to break me, you keep molding me. Because God, I know there's dynamite inside of me. So God, light the wick. Oh God, may, may South Central Kentucky, this region, change. And God, I pray today for every person under my voice. Hey God, we would get so tired of saying, I just go to church. No, we are the church. We are the church. I'm just not going to heaven. I am heaven. I just don't worship. I am worship. So Father God, in this time, in this hour, have your way. I am praying a crazy prayer. I am praying that everybody under my voice will be bent and broken today. You say, well, Brian, I'm good today. I'm good today. You know, you think you're good. How many of y'all want more of Jesus? Y'all ready? How many of y'all want more of Jesus? Y'all ready? Raise your hand if you want more of Jesus. Come on. Here's the way you get it. Y'all ready? He's got to get more of you. He's got to get more of you. If you are unwilling to be broken and bent and not moldable, I'm telling you in Jesus' name, I believe that God's hands upon Elkhorn. I believe that God has put the light inside this church. And I believe that God has placed us on top of a hillside. And I believe in Jesus' name. And I believe that we can do what God has called us to do. But we got to be bent. We got to be broken. We got to be moldable. And you've got to be lit by the Holy Ghost. People can laugh about the Holy Spirit all they want to. I get laughed out of churches all the time. Because you mentioned Holy Spirit. Isn't it funny? They, they, they just like, nothing's happening in their church, but he lives in them and he wants to explode. So in Jesus' name, spiritually, I take this spiritual dynamite and I light it with the spiritual Holy Ghost. And either y'all can run to the altar or you can stay in your seats. But I'm telling you, what if you had 10 seconds to get to the altar where God is at? 10 seconds. Now we're going to leave it down there. I'm being honest. Would you be in your seat? Y'all got mem members of your family that's dying and going to hell? Would you be in your seats if you knew you had eight more seconds, seven more seconds, six more seconds? Would you be in your seats and you knew that God was coming back in five seconds? Would you be in your seat? I want to be look like this. 
So in Jesus' name, the dynamite has been lit. And if you're being bent and broken right now, God is just trying to mold you into what he wants you to be. Y'all, if you would, stand to your feet. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Bend us and break us. Bend us and break us. Mold us, God, into what you want us to be. God's waiting for you. We're not waiting on God. God's waiting on you. You may be lost in this house today and you have felt something in your spirit like you've never felt before. That is the Holy Spirit. Please don't walk in one way. I want you to walk in one way and leave another. But you've got as much of Jesus as you want. So light us up, God. I want to be a Holy Ghost Spirit-filled man of God. I want a King David moment where I'm a God chaser. I want to be able to call things that are not as though they are. With a bad doctor's reporter even facing death, I've got something in me greater, greater, greater than anything that I'm up against right now. This God thing that we preach about and sing about is real. But you've got to become hungry and thirsty for it. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Filled with what? Dynamite. Dynamite. Church, this altar is open. I'm not begging you to come. Either you feel God or you don't feel God. Either you're sitting there going, Brian, I'm good today. I'm not going to get bent. I'm not going to get broken. No, you know why? Because you don't want to be moldable. (laughs) That hurts. That clay stuff hurts. So in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. This altar's open. This altar's open. Are you willing to be bent? Are you willing to be broken? Are you willing for God to mold you? Are you willing to let the dynamite inside of you explode?